Happy Wednesday, fellow dreamers. This video is dedicated to Alyssa. So I used to be a big fan of Spider-Man. I'm big into rollerblading because I'm the coolest weeb you will ever know. And sometimes while I rollerblade, I daydream about web-slinging. The back and forth pushing on the rollerblades just seemed complimentary to me to swinging from skyscrapers. But as I've grown older, Spider-Man has started to seem more childish and so we've grown apart. I mean, who can really compare with Batman? But then one day I made a video about Superman and Batman and people kept bringing up Spider-Man. So I guess I'm going to talk more about Spider-Man. So Spider-Man seems childish. He's very unusual among superheroes because he's very young. He's only in high school. Also, his fights are full of these side comments and puns. And his tagline is kind of cheesy. Your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Imagine how out of character it would seem for another superhero to say, I'm your friendly neighborhood Batman. So there's the gritty and brooding Batman who wrestles with darkness. There's the noble Superman who we can always count on when we're in trouble. And then there's the swinging webhead Spider-Man who's quick to quip and struggles to balance his superhero life with high school. Yes, he definitely seems a little childish. But you know, humor is a funny thing. Sometimes the lightest remarks veil much deeper thoughts. And so I had to ask, is there a deeper side to Spider-Man? I love talking about supervillains. That's probably not a healthy thing. But the Green Goblin is by far my favorite supervillain from Spider-Man's world. He makes a lot of jokes, and he's lighthearted in his maniacal death dealing. What more could you really ask for in a supervillain? But that makes him fascinating to compare with Spider-Man, because they're both jokesters and lighthearted. And so looking at them side by side makes it much easier to see what they take serious. For example, there was that time when the Green Goblin held Mary Jane and a cable car full of people from a bridge. And then, after a dramatic moment of suspense, he dropped them both. And the question was, who is Spider-Man going to save? How that scene pans out is an iconic moment that illustrates who is and who is not a jokester when it comes to people's lives. Then there's Venom. Venom is the gritty and brooding version of Spider-Man. And you know, I feel like Venom is a really hard character to portray. Venom is a parasite that lives inside Spider-Man for a while. And Venom makes Spider-Man obsess over all the things that he hates in his life. So very quickly, Spider-Man starts to get angry at everybody in his life. I mean, his family and his friends and his boss and the villains that he's fighting and the public and the police and everybody. And while he's doing that, he tends to blow everything out of proportion. So, question. Can that come across as cheesy? Can it look like Peter Parker is being childish and stupid? Yes, I would say so. But also, I personally can sometimes see myself doing the same thing. I can go through periods where I obsess over all the things that I don't like in my life. And I start to get really angry at different people in my life for no real good reasons. And they can become really dark times really quickly. And you know, to add to all of that, I know that I'm being childish and stupid. And so while it's hard to portray someone who's being childish and stupid as relatable, I personally can relate to that. And how does Spider-Man come out of these dark times? What is the moral of the story of Venom? It's important to remember the good things and the good people in our lives. It's important not to dwell on negativity. It's important to be just a little lighthearted. I also wonder a little bit about high schoolers. That would be a creepy phrase out of context, but Spider-Man is a high schooler, so it's okay. Someone once pointed out to me that high schoolers are expected to make these huge decisions about where they want to study, what they want to study, and ultimately what they want to do for the rest of their lives. And at the same time, they need to ask for permission to go to the bathroom. I see that as a really strange combination of being asked to make really big decisions while at the same time not being trusted with little things. And I feel like there's a lot more to talk about when it comes to teenagers. I'm not gonna really expound on this in this video, but if you have any thoughts on teenagers in our world, let me know in the comments. So to sum up, is the stoicism and brooding of Superman and Batman really better than the lightheartedness of Spider-Man? I would say no. But Superman and Batman are still really cool and I made a whole video about them. If you like this video, you should check it out. You can find it by clicking on the upside down exclamation point. Thank you everyone who joined my video conference last week. For those that weren't there, you sure missed out. But we decided that I'm going to be making a video and try to incorporate ideas like a tricycle and criminal justice and pies in the face and a parachute. So I'm sure that that will go swimmingly. So for that and for other exciting projects that will actually come out before that one will, stay tuned. All right, that's all I have this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a fantastic week. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you next Wednesday. God bless and ciao.